Hello, thank you for joining me today. If you enjoy my videos, please don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and leave me a comment. Welcome to Nomad's Land Studios, narrations by Rebecca. The Blackout Man, from the r slash no sleep subreddit. A few years ago, I was running my own company from home, and I took on more work than I could handle. I did graphic design for several companies and a handful of larger corporations, which put me under a lot of pressure to deliver. Long story short, too many deadlines and not enough time for me to rest. I decided I needed a break or I would certainly suffer a burnout soon enough. Lucky for me, I had quite a bit of money saved up, so I could afford it. I took a couple of months off to clear my head. After a few days of me trying to relax and failing to do so, I realized that I needed to get away from my house. Essentially, I was spending my vacation in an office, feeling guilty I didn't do any work. I decided to get away from the city and spend a few weeks at my family's old summer cabin instead. I packed up my bags and headed out of town early next morning. While driving, I was a bit nervous. Nobody had been to the cabin for at least a year, and there had been a few severe storms during that time, so who knew if the cabin was still standing. Well, in any case, I was about to find out in an hour or so. When I arrived, I was relieved to see that the cabin looked exactly like when we left it last year. So did the shed. The lawn was a bit overgrown, but that was okay. I really needed some physical work after months and months of sitting in front of a screen. Then I would chop some firewood for the grill, stuff my face with steak and sandwiches, and fall asleep. Perfect. Said and done, some time later I was chilling in the hammock I had set up on the porch, satisfied and drowsy. I could feel myself drifting off, so I set the alarm on my phone to make sure I woke up before dark. As far as I know, there hadn't been any animal attacks or anything, but I wanted to be safe anyway. I put the phone on the porch railing and fell asleep only seconds later. I woke up before the alarm could go off, to the sound of rain hitting the metal roof of the porch. I rubbed the sleep out of my eyes and immediately thought of making another sandwich, when I noticed an odd shape, maybe fifty yards away in the woods. There, sticking out of the brush, I saw a grey, almost purple human-looking head staring right at me, completely still. It was too far away to make out any distinct details, but I could definitely see large dark eyes in its almost skull-like head. I don't know how to describe the mouth, or snout, though. Imagine a dog's snout, but make it shorter and wider, more akin to the jaws of a lizard, with no visible nose. It was just so weird looking. The head looked so human, but at the same time it didn't. I wasn't even sure it was a living thing because it was so still. A drop of rain must have hit its eye or something because it flinched or twitched. I was freaking out. This was definitely a living thing staring at me. I slowly got out of the hammock, trying not to fall or stumble as to not give this potentially hostile creature any chance to charge at me. I backed to the door, fumbling with the handle, and as soon as I got it open, I turned and ran inside as fast as I could, slamming the door behind me. I immediately looked out a window and saw that the thing was still there, sitting in the same place. I think it noticed me peeking out the window, moving its head just a little bit, staring at me again. I was freaking out, wondering what the hell that thing was. Surely it was just some sickly animal that had picked up the smell of food, right? Our staring contest continued a minute or two before I drew the curtains. I jumped to the sound of my alarm going off. Crap! My phone was still outside. I thought about it for a moment before I slowly opened the door, thinking that I would be able to grab it and get back inside before that thing could get to the house. My eyes fell on the spot I had last seen the creature, and to my horror, it wasn't there anymore. I immediately regretted my decision and shut the door again, without getting my phone. I was about to look out the window again, when I heard something step onto the porch. 
My heart was thumping, and I made an effort to hide my heavy breathing and listened as hard as I could. I heard ropes creaking, then a snap and a heavy thud. This thing had just torn down my hammock. I heard steps approaching the door, and the handle started moving slowly. At that moment, I felt sick and wanted to scream, but I couldn't. The thing was carefully trying to open the door and get inside. Then it stopped. The door handle stopped moving, and soon thereafter, I heard the thing stepping away from the door and off the porch. Did it give up? I stood there with my back against the door for several minutes before I even moved an inch. I slowly made my way to the window and drew the curtains. And I will never forget what was waiting for me on the other side of that window. The last thing I remember before blacking out was the largest, emptiest black eyes I have ever seen on any living thing. A pale face riddled with purple veins and a huge smile lined with abnormally large, dull teeth. I had no idea if I fainted or if some sort of primal part of my consciousness took over and my brain went into some sort of suppression mode. Because when I woke up the next day, I was in the damned shed with a bunch of tools propped up against the door. I couldn't remember anything after I saw the face and I have no idea what happened. After hours of making sure nothing was outside, I ran to the porch, got my phone and my jacket, and ran to the car as fast as I could. On my way home, I think I had a full-blown panic attack, but kept driving because I did not want to stop. I drove straight to my parents' house and broke down crying in front of them, probably scaring the crap out of them. My therapist says that this was me not being able to differentiate between a nightmare and real life due to the high levels of work-related stress at the time. As for me waking up in the shed, most likely stress-induced sleepwalking, according to her. Maybe I had some sort of breakdown and I was in worse shape than I thought, but I don't know about that. Thing is, though, when my dad drove to get my stuff from the cabin, he noticed the hammock rope was indeed snapped, and when he checked the shed, the door was broken in, as if something came back to get me after I already left. I don't know if what I saw was real or not, and quite frankly, I'm not sure I want to know. I have no idea how large it was, what its body looked like, or anything like that. I just remember its head from far away, and its face the eyes, the veins, the pale color, the mouth. I've come to call it the Blackout Man. <laughs>